Hello, so this is just going to be a video basically explaining what sort of videos I'll probably be getting around to filming in the next week or so because at the moment I've kind of got loads of things I want to film and I'm not really sure on the order I'm going to do them so mostly in this video it's just going to show you what's coming up for the people that are interested in certain things so they don't keep saying when's this video happening, when's that video happening so Hypes really kindly again sent me a load of stuff for free to basically do videos on um, one of them is a Chinese MF1A gas mask I've already got one of these but the one I had basically had a really shitty o-ring in it or like kind of a bad glue job which he warned me might you know happen with some of them um, so I think he sent me one now that actually works, so I can do a proper video on it, and that's good. Because with the other one, I was going to eventually get around to like putting a new O-ring through it, you know, and doing some silicon adhesive, and I just never got around to it. But when I dig out where I've stored it, I'll probably do that at some point, because I do actually have silicon adhesive now, but thanks to him for sending that, so there's that. Then, um, there's two sort of Chinese industrial respirators he sent me, and he, these ones are kind of cool because they're actually Chinese domestic designs, I believe he was saying rather than being just, you know, a standard 3M ripoff or whatever. So, this is the older style one, and this is the newer style one, I believe. And he sent me a load of spare filters for them and everything, so I'll get around to uh, using those. This one reminds me a lot of the Soviet, um, something like the PY-60M respirator it was called. I don't actually have one, but I do have a Bulgarian kind of one similar to that. Uh, although this obviously takes... Profit. Let's have a quick look. Um, so what I want to see is is the filter medium like the same thing. I need to obviously dig the Bulgarian one out, but um, yeah, that actually is a really similar design, so I'm kind of interested if I get the Bulgarian one. Does it use the same kind of filter style? But yeah, as you can see, it's a quite a cheapo looking um, sort of Chinese mask, but it's an interesting thing. Um, so I'll do a proper video on this one, but yeah. The foam doesn't make it all that uncomfortable, actually. Obviously, you'd have a strap on, uh, <laughs> a strap on, you know what I mean. You'd have the uh, straps tied up and everything on your head uh, when you were actually wearing it. But yeah, it's not, it's not an unpleasant design. Um, I mean, the foam is actually quite good at comforting the thing. Obviously, it's, it's not a brilliant half face respirator. It's obviously very cheap, but you know, if they're cheap and they work, then it's not, you know, an awful thing if it's just as a basic sort of commuting sort of mask to avoid corona type stuff. So there's that. And, as you probably know, I've got the digital ionisation chambers I need to get around to doing videos on. Uh, which is something I was waiting absolutely ages for to arrive, and then there was the whole thing with those. Uh, but basically, a digital ionisation chamber is an ionisation chamber that can respond to like background levels of radiation. That's always got a really shiny um, thing on these, the type of film they use on them. Uh, this is just an air meter, this one, the Victorine 450. Annoyingly, this is the one that doesn't have the backlit display, because otherwise it would be much easier to read. It's not currently at 2 uh, millironcon in here, but when you first turn these on, they seem to, um... I think these auto-zero, but basically, you know, you have to leave them on for, like, two minutes before they go down to, like, background levels. Um, where, with the other one I've got, the uh, Keefley ones, how they're designed is basically... You turn them on with a switch set to zero, you then set that to zero, and then you switch it to run. So, you know, you manually zero it, which is faster for zeroing it, but you that means you have to, do, you know, do that quite often. Whereas with this one, I guess the idea is you turn it on just a minute before you want to use it, and it zeroes itself. Um, also, with ionization chambers, for some reason, uh, because of how they work, if you move them around... Um, they always kind of pick up more radiation because of that reason and I think that's just an air pressure thing rather than being real radiation so you see it's gone up to 3.5 milli ronken uh, per hour there um, but this one has quite a cool display because it has like a bottom bar that changes the scale uh, when you get to different radiation ranges so normally it's on the 0 to 5 scale you know and when it's background it'd be literally like there um, and then when it goes you put on a check source that goes past 5 for example then go to 5 to 10 it would keep changing the scale so it's, it's really cool because obviously it's a yellow Victorine thing that's reminiscent of the old Civil Defence era things, but it's actually a lot more practical because it, you know, measures uh, background radiation. So uh, there you go. Um, there's, that's the videos that are coming up soon. Um, these are very interesting because I do want to get around to doing a proper video at some point where I compare and contrast digital ionisation chambers with sort of modern digital Geiger counters and that way I can probably explain the benefits and flaws of Geiger counters versus iron chambers, you know, in a lot better way. Because the problem's been for ages that because it's much easier to find digital Geiger counters on the market than it is digital ionisation chambers, it kind of led me to assume, a lot of people to assume that, you know, ionisation chambers are just not as good, where they kind of have their own pros and cons, I don't want to get too much into that in this video. But ionisation chambers are much better at measuring pure ionisation of the air, 
Uh, so giving a very true sort of reading of what the you know measurement is, which is why they tend to use Röntgens because that's the correct way of using a Röntgen measurement, measuring the ionisation of the air. Um, whereas Geiger counters are technically using a dose equivalence if they're not displaying in CPS or CPM. Um, you know, so they're saying that on cesium-137 this many counts would equal this dose equivalent, which is fine with a Geiger counter if you're actually experiencing that, but it often means that you get an overestimated or an underestimated number depending on what your check source is. So um, at some point I do want to do a video when I get a load of these, you know, zeroed properly. Uh, next to a few digital Geiger counters and show that I can put the same check source on them and the digital ionisation chambers will generally read very similar numbers where the Geiger counters can read all over the place because they're using a counts per second, counts per minute equivalent. Um, so yeah, that, that's that. Um, obviously the only issue of this is the old sort of LCD display or whatever it is is a bit naff on here with, uh, you know, like the numbers sometimes slightly disappearing but it's quite a nice thing anyway. Um, and it's one of those things I'm sure the much more modern ones, you know, are a lot better. Uh, oh, look, it's just about gone to background radiation now. 0 0.04 um, milliromtgen. Uh, yeah, it's obviously 0 0.2 microsieverts is generally background, and um, milliromtgens are um, smaller than microsieverts. Uh, well, sorry, bigger than microsieverts, but, um, you know, you'd expect a smaller number in background. Um, I've noticed with these I don't think they go quite as low as background according to Geiger counters but then that's also because this isn't going to be showing you a cesium-137 equivalent like lots of Geiger counters are that would do the 0 0.2 microsieverts or you know 0 0.02 um, millirongen so yeah there is that isn't there because they use a different uh, method of displaying a dose um, but yeah that it's going down to basically 0 0.02 0 0.03 uh, millirongen per hour background radiation I think that'd be pretty accurate in all honesty because you know, of how radiation works. Um, but yeah, as I said. So, upcoming videos, I will also do one showing the Schmitz Rubin um, cycling snap caps, because um, Comrade uh, Tavares I wanted to call him Comrade Tavares then. Tavares Artyom's very kindly sent me some snap caps for that. And annoyingly, it's one of those things I'd love to just show you on the stream, but YouTube's rules say you can't show firearms on the stream, but you can on a regular video. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll, cycle, um, I'll cycle the um, caps on that one. Um, because I've got the Schmitz Rubin sort of cycling really well now. I had to do an adjustment to the magazine on that because it's one of those weird old magazines where the first model Schmitz Rubin has a detachable magazine, but it's not really a detachable magazine. So it's more like you want to get it in exactly the right place and then screw it in quite tight. So um, the bolt feeds the um, you know cartridges into the um, barrel properly um, or the receiver. You know, whereas. Um, if you don't have the magazine in quite the right place, it struggles to pick them up properly, or you know they sort of jam when you um, the bolt keeps jamming on part of the magazine, uh, and that's something you don't actually realise until you start you know loading a load of rounds into the magazine and start cycling it. That you know you then realise when you're into a problem because it's not just the bolt having to go forwards and backwards; the bolt's actually having to pick the rounds up and eject them properly without catching on anything. So that's that. So I'll do a video on that. I need to do a video on the masks hype sent me. Video on the digital ionisation chambers. Um, I bought a whiteboard, like a giant whiteboard, so I can do some videos on like theoretical stuff with uh, radiation. Well, it's not really theoretical, but you know, doing actual things where I can write um, unit comparisons on this. It's on a big whiteboard, so um, it's you know easier than trying to all explain it uh, without sort of infographics or whatever. Um, and yeah, so that that's sort of the upcoming load of videos. Um, in all honesty, um, mostly the sort of Chinese industrial masks and um, radiation stuff. 